And this is a, a figure showing the damage levels in increasing magnitudes of earthquake. After a part, there will be a life safety where we generally design our structures for life safety uh, performance level. And beyond that, there is collapse prevention level for higher earthquake hazard level. Even though, if you say that for an important structure, for example, let's, let's talk about a hospital, you can say that, okay, this is a hospital, it's an important structure, so I have an importance factor of for intoxic code is 1.5. This means that you are increasing the design force that you are increasing the seismic force that you are designing your structure by 1.5, by multiplying it by, by 1.5. Yes, you can have a structure building that can resist the seismic actions. Maybe there won't be any structural damage, or maybe there might be some minor cracks that can be repairable after an earthquake. However, when you go inside, you might experience a scene like this. I mean, these are buildings, for example, the, the one on the, on the top, it was a building that we visited while we went to the seismic isolation conference in New Zealand in 2017. There was an earthquake. The building was uh, designed with modern codes in strength-based design. This is the view from outside. I mean, this, this photo was taken by us from outside after an earthquake that happened something like 150 kilometers away from the epicenter. And this is the visual, uh, the, the photo, the scene from the inside. I mean, even though you can protect the structural system from the earthquakes, inside you might experience a scene like this. Or these are some scenes from other earthquakes, an airport and a hospital. I mean, a hospital that you designed by an important factor, factor of 1.5 may seem undamaged from outside, but inside you might see a scene like this and you cannot use the hospital after an earthquake that you need, you really need after an earthquake. So this was the problem. I mean, you can protect maybe the structure, you can have some minor damages in your structure, but it is very, very hard to protect the non-structural components in a building, whether you have to make special seismic design of non-structural members, which can go very expensive, or you can isolate the building. This is the solution of the problem. So let's talk about, I mean, you talk about the seismic isolation. I mean, we uh, at this seminar, we will not talk about the seismic design of non-structural members, but we will talk about seismic isolation of buildings. What is seismic isolation? In a conventional design, during an earthquake, the building moves like this. I mean, there are deformation at story levels and uh, due, to the, due to the relative drift of the story levels. And these deformations in the column beam joint uh, create damage and the building might not be used after, a after the design level earthquake, might not need to be retrofitted or maybe demolished and reconstruct earthquake has a demand, has a displacement demand on the building. And the displacement demand for such a building, for a conventional design building, is provided by the relative storage rates. However, in a seismic isolated structure, you decouple the building from the ground level. Uh, you put some members, some bearings that are very flexible in the lateral direction. Uh, but very stiff in the vertical direction so that they can carry the vertical load of the building. But during an earthquake, they can move in a lateral direction. The demand of the displacement demand of the earthquake is provided by the seismic isolators in this case. How seismic isolation works is that uh, the vibration properties of the building is modified by installing the isolators as such the signals of the seismic event is reduced. I mean, there are two figures here. One is seismic isolators on the left. The, the other one is uh, the conventionally designed building. You can see that during a seismic event, the inhabitants of the building might not even notice that there was an earthquake and uh, all the structural and non-structural members are protected in a seismic isolated building. However, in conventional design, you, you can see that even though maybe the building uh, does not collapse, you can see that non-structural components fall down, uh, some uh, mechanical equipments, the pipes can break, 
and the building might not be used after an earthquake. So the main benefit of seismic isolation can be the reduction of the story defects, which is related to the damage in the building, reduction of story accelerations, which means that you reduce the seismic force acting on the building. So, and hence reduction of structural member forces. Let's see a similar test for a seismic isolated building that was tested in Japan, a shake table test. Uh, below, you see a, a blue surface. Uh, that is the shake table itself and the green pistons on the left uh, that gives uh, the uh, that simulates the earthquake for this building the building is a reinforced concrete building uh, that was uh, designed as a hospital you can see the uh, furnitures in the in in the uh, uh, building and below there is there are seismic isolators and it's a strong shake actually the building moves over the shake table which represents the ground uh, it floats nearly what you see is that only the sl sliding components of the building and the roller uh, component roller furnitures move in the building but the overall system does not get damaged and uh, there are no non structural damages in the building if this was a conventional design building you will see both structural damage and non structural damage at the same time this is another video recording that was recorded uh, during Tohoku earthquake. Maybe it is a little bit further than the uh, epicenter of the earthquake. But here you see the ground level column. The seismic action started, the earthquake started. You see that only the actually ground moves, but the building is like floating on the isolator, which is a uh, black uh, member here. And here you see the displacement that it makes since it is a little bit uh, far away from the center the displacement levels are nearly 10 centimeters and here you can see the uh, acceleration records in the ground floor and above the isolator and you can see that it is the acceleration levels are reduced reduced nearly maybe uh, three times four times another footage from an earthquake in Japan again I guess uh, this is the building seismic isolated building please notice the shoes on the ground and uh, the building uh, here and uh, when the seismic action starts actually the ground moves not the building again and you can see how the building reacts to the earthquake you see the you see how the ground displaces during the seismic event, but the building stands still.